many of you are happy to be alive in Jesus? Amen. 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 I have a message today for you, and it's a strong message, but it's a message that we all need to hear. Amen. How many of you love our great country? Amen. How many of you love the veterans and those who have given themselves even to die and perish on behalf yes. of our country. We have such a debt to these men and women yeah. who have served our country. Let's just let's be In spite of our great heritage, 
and the multiplied blessings of the past, America stands on the threshold of disaster. The greatest threat of our times is moral deterioration. Research it. Go back in time. No nation has ever prospered which has allowed immorality to reign. I'm not talking today. I'm talking for all of history. We are in the midst of one of the greatest moral declines in human history. Sexual obsession, perversion, rape, abortion, and degeneracy reflect the unprecedented depth of our immorality and promiscuous conduct. Impurities have become the order of the day. Premarital relationships are condoned, and few cry out against this evil. Under the guise of sex, ed sex education, immorality is deceptively spread. Do you know that roughly 400,000 children in the, US, in the U.S. are lured into the sex trades every year? Did you hear that? 400,000 children. Many of the mag magazines of our time are filthy, and the songs are sensual, and our politics are blatantly corrupt, and the dress of our day is designed to create sexual attraction. The first day of the week was set aside as a day of worship, but it has become a holiday instead of a holy day. On Sundays, churches are relatively empty in comparison to sports events. Bars are comfort comfortably filled. Casinos are overflowing, and nightclubs are not wanting for a crowd. Sacred holidays like Christmas and Easter are no are more often celebrated with wine, women, and song instead of thanks and praise to the Almighty God that gives us all these blessings. It is evident that America has sown to the wind, and we will be very soon reaping a whirlwind. We have sown to social drinking and reaped the drunkard. We have sown to pornography and reaped the adulterer. We have sown to the allure of sex and reaped perversion. We have sown to lawlessness and reaped chronic crime. There's an effort afoot that when people have a crime that is under two years in nature, that they will never serve that. Anywhere and everywhere in these United States, a revolt against righteousness has been waged. The Word of God tells us in 2 Thessalonians 2.7 that in the latter days, the mystery of iniquity, that is speaking of the spirit of anti Antichrist, which is lawlessness, would be at work. And only the restraining force of the Spirit of God is keeping back the flood of moral corruption until it, he takes his church out of the way. And that will signal the start of the Great Tribulation. In every part of our country there is a contemptuous disregard for righteous living. Second Timothy says this, but know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. <coughs> for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, 
despisers of good, traitors, headlong, halty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And speaking to you and me, it says, and from such, turn away, shun. Foundations of our moral civilization is crumbling. Psalm 11.3, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Religion has been barred from our schools, yet homosexual and lesbian rights are being promoted. Access is readily available to condoms and abortions without parents' knowledge or consent. At the start of our great, great nation, the Bible, which was the first textbook and compromised 97% of the curricula in American schools. But now it's outlawed and it is replaced with evolutionary theories. God is laughed at and mocked in the classroom. Heaven is portrayed as a fantasy and hell as a joke. Man is called a biological accident, and his origin must be traced to lower forms of life. For allowing ungodly liberals and scoffers and atheists to corrupt and dictate the agenda of our schools of learning, we must repent and institute moral reform, or we will perish. Millions of marriages suffer from the effects of loose and morals, pornography, promiscuous behavior, deviant sex, and lack of de desecration. There is an alarming increase in divorce and disregard for the sanctity of marriage. You see, America once was a Christian nation, but now it leads the world in divorce. Divorce in America seems to be a fudgy number, but it's somewhere between 42 and 50 percent. Hollywood promotes divorce on the screen by way of the lifestyles of their stars who have disregarded God's command regarding marriage. What God has joined together let no man put asunder. We must repent for producing a generation of maladjusted children. Children that are filled with anxiety, frustration, and insecurity. Now I have to tell you, where I work we have to ask in the detention center where I work, the first questions I have to ask them is if they have any medical conditions I need to know about. I will tell you 70% of all the people that walk in there tell me anxiety. 50% of every American is on at least one psych med for anxiety. One in every two people in America, 24% of Americans are on three or more psych meds for anxiety. What does that tell you? Children are filled with anxiety, frustration, and insecurity. Instead of teaching their children the importance of moral values, loving concern, responsibility, and unselfishness, their parents have listened to the voice of a corrupt world and followed after the lure of lust rather than the guiding voice of God. The growing sin of alcoholism and drugs is a menace to society. One third of Americans abuse alcohol. Alcohol 
is the number three killer in our country. And I don't have to mention drugs. Because that is way out of control. The love of alcohol is the root of much violence, crime, and sin that is committed today. The alcohol and drugs of our day, as God says in Isaiah 5, 11, inflames the lust of a man or woman. It causes one's eyes to wander and become inflamed with an unrighteous passion for an adulterous affair, which in turn leads to the destruction of the family. The love of money is also a root for much evil in our society. It is evident that the American public is focused on monetary gain to supply their passion for a higher living. Watch the TV. Probably a third of all the shows are trying to encourage you to live at a higher standard than most of us can afford to live. We have put a greater priority upon things than we have on God and family and moral living to our own destruction. The scripture says righteousness lives up a nation. The erroneous thinking of our day is that right and wrong is a matter of one's opinion but righteousness that the scripture talks about is the righteousness of God at work in us. And that lifts up a nation as we act in accordance with God's laws. God never gave mankind the authority to decide what was right and wrong. Amen. That is his realm. Amen. And he has not given it to me, to you, or anyone else in this country. Times, cultures, opinions, and behaviors may change. But the almighty God who governs heaven above and the earth below says, I am the Lord and I do not change. Amen. You see, the more we stray away from divine law, the more we lose our influence, our power, and our blessing in our nation. Can you see it? Are you seeing it? Amen. God alone rules. And governs this universe. Not you, not me. Not our elected officials. Certainly not the Supreme Court. Nor the one who occupies the White House. It is God who says what is right. It's up to the people of a nation to choose whether we reject or obey God's law. The more we strand, we stray from divine law, the more we lose the influence and power and blessing of a nation. Many of our churches have been influenced by the assault of corruptive sin. Second Timothy says in chapter 3:12. That the Christian who lives godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So well, I haven't seen a lot of that. It's coming real soon. Did you hear me? Yes. Number one threat to America. In all that I read is towards veterans and then ecumenical Christians. We are number two 
on the most wanted list. Some medical ministers don't suffer because they're spiritually dead. They refuse to preach the fullness of the gospel. The scripture says righteousness lives up a nation, but sin brings a nation to its knees. The Bible warns that God will hold every one of us accountable for every thought, every word, every deed. Jesus said, for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it on the day of judgment. Proverbs 24, 12, If you say, Behold, we do not know this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it? And will he not repay man according to his word? You see, nothing will escape the judgment of God. The most Christian nation in the history of our world has now become one of the most godless nations in history. Sin is a reproach upon America, and the results of that spells trouble yes. for our nation. Goal of the president, congressman, Leaders of the EU and even the Pope is to establish a new globalism, a new world order, which can only be achieved by destroying the American way of living. Out of this immoral chaos will arise a new order, and it will open the door for the end times and Antichrist. Yeah. 2 Timothy 3.12 says the Christian who lives godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. There's coming days of great hardship and even persecution to the people of God. But you do not need to be fearful nor alarmed for the Lord our God still reigns. He still reigns. And he will burn protect and provide his people through the difficult days that are coming until the rapture comes and we go home. Yes, thank you, Lord. How do you know this is not our home? That's right. Amen. That's right. This is but a country we are soldiering in. Mm -hmm. We're here for a little while. But eternity awaits us. Thank you. I want you to know this. We talked about it about a month or so ago. But I'm not coming off it. Know this. God is sovereign. That means he is in control of all things at all times. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. You see, at some time, every one of us will find ourselves facing some serious problems, but in those times, God calls us to place our trust in him over those matters with a right attitude and with a prayerful dependence upon him to bring us through. And when I'm in such a place like that, I'll tell you what I do. I get my Bible out and I rehearse in my mind the truths and hopes and graces of God and they become sustaining and they, they become powerful in my heart. God is in supreme control. Amen. Supreme in authority. Supreme in power to produce his desired and ordained will. Mm -hmm. When unexpected or serious issues come, 
your way or my way, God instructs us to do this. Trust in me with all your heart. Trust in me with all your heart. Amen. That's what he says. It says this. God through Christ upholds. This is what Hebrews 1 3 says. God through Christ upholds all things. By the, by the word of his power. Now that word upholds in the original means this. An active, pur purposeful control over the thing that is being carried from one place to another. So God says Christ upholds all things. He is actively and purposefully controlling the thing or the person like you and me from one place to another. Amen. God is with us in every step. Jesus is continually carrying all, all things in the universe, including the most minute details of our life. And God also encourages us to trust him and not to doubt. That means you have to refuse to doubt that he is always in control of the things that are in your life. For doubt is the ground for fear and worry. Therefore, we choose not to live by sight, nor by feelings, but by way of exercising faith in God's promise. Oh, Do you get that? Amen. If men and women who are so filled with anxiety would turn to God and the promises of His Word, they would need no more medication. That's right. That's right. Not criticizing that for it. Uh, criticizing them for that. Many have never heard the gospel. But the gospel has a much better plan than the one that many of us are willing to receive. We must do what David did. He encouraged himself in the Lord. And Psalm 56, he says this, Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. He said, whenever I am afraid, I will. Oh, how I love that. You know what that means? He chose to. He decided. His emotions didn't send it there. It was an act of his will. He said, I, I believe what God has said. And I'm going to trust that he's going to do that. And I'm not going to let the surrounding circumstances to dictate my actions. But rather, I will put my trust in God and let him bring me through. So he say amen to that. Amen. Amen. David talked to himself. Who do you talk to yourself? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a problem saying that. I talk to myself. What are you doing? What are you thinking, man? You got to be playing. Seriously. <laughs> Scripture said David encouraged himself in the Lord. He started to rehearse in his mind. He began to look back in the way that God brought him through the hardest times of his life. He was on the run by an army for seven years. Yeah. <laughs> now wait a minute. 
an army was after him to take his life for seven years. Is that a little pressure? <laughs> but he encouraged himself in the Lord. He said, whenever I'm afraid, I will trust him. I will. When you and I begin to have doubts and fears, when we look at what's happening in our country, we just need to refix our eyes on Jesus yes. and acknowledge Him. Yes. We need to be mindful of our inabilities and prayerfully dependent, looking to God to bring His purposes to pass in His time, in His way, for He shall direct our path. God is sovereign. Amen. And that truth is an anchor to the soul. Yes. Both sure and steadfast. Yes. We buy it. I didn't come here today to upset your day. But I love my country. And I love the people of America. Amen. And what I don't love is the direction we are settling. Because the end of that is disaster. God is actively at work in our lives when we make a commitment. See, life, I've learned this I'm old now. <laughs> I learned that what is most important in life is not things. It's not having the best house or the best car, the best clothes, or the most popularity. What I've learned is life is about relationship. We live life around family, friends, our work base, people that we know, the church of God, our wife, our children. But above all of that, my relationship with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And that relationship with God is the sweetest and best experience of life. God calls us to relationship through Jesus Christ. Our country is so hungry for love and peace and comfort that they're going in all the wrong directions today. They reject the Savior, Jesus Christ. They reject his word. They go down avenues of sin. They become broken, hurt. Their families suffer. They suffer. God never intended it for life to be so. When you receive Christ, you see, you have to receive Christ. You have to choose to enter into a relationship with Him. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about church affiliation. I'm talking about God Almighty and His Savior, Jesus Christ. You can come into right relationship with God through Christ only. Your church affiliation does not save you. Your efforts to Perform good works cannot save you. The only thing that can save you is when you get down on your knees and you ask Christ to come into your life and you invite Him to be your Savior and yield your life to Him. And when you do that, when you invite Him to be your Savior, you endeavor to put away sin draw close to you. Now 
will tell you peace and joy will flood into your life. And life will become rich. It will become so satisfying. Peace, joy, even in hard times, will be yours. For Christ is faithful. Amen. And he died for my sin and for yours. And you today can know Christ. Maybe right here in this sanctuary, or maybe via our tape, and you're in our living, I want to encourage you today. Christ is the answer. Our country has chosen to go down all the wrong avenues. But you don't have to. You can turn to Christ. Difficult days are ahead. But God is faithful. I have a son. I have two sons. And I will tell you, nobody has to poke me or encourage me to be there when they're in need. And I'm telling you, I'm a faulty father, but the Father in heaven above has no faults. And if I should do that, how much greater will God Almighty reach into your life and touch your life and give you the grace and help and strength and peace and salvation that only Christ can give. Today's your day. Our country is going down all the wrong streets. Things will get hard. But God will be closer. And we shall enjoy the victory. Amen. 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 Father, I think about those who have served our country, and I think of those who've lost their lives. And those parents whose hearts were broken, shattered. And every day of their life, they remember the loss of their son or daughter. God, I pray in Jesus' name, your grace will be upon them. I pray a blessing. I pray, God, a blessing upon them. For those who have served our country and lost a limb, lost the ability walk or use their arms. God, I pray your grace would be upon them as well. May it be that, Father, you would raise up, if you see fit, a godly leader in our country that will help our country to go in a better Will you give grace to President Obama? I pray, Lord, you open his eyes. Yes. Cause him, Lord, to recognize the air. And I pray, Lord, that he will go into an avenue in which he will seek you. Yes. I pray the same for Congress. I pray the same for the Supreme Court leaders of our country. I pray you have grace upon them. I pray that, Lord, you will speak to them. And I pray, Lord, that our country will see revival and a great influx of those who will come to know Christ. For soon after, we will leave this earth. I will be forever with you. And so we thank you for your grace. Bless all who have come here today and their families. God bless you. Happy Memorial. Yes, we're thirsty. Hear us as we pray.